<laughs> we've got, just we've also got. Oh, no. What, the dog has? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Annie Seagrave, Vera Sandler, welcome back to the podcast. How's it going? Good, thank you. Um, I don't know what to say anymore. It smells of dog farts in here. What's been, uh, what have you guys been up to? Anyway, I've had an expansion <laughs> for the past week, so I've not been doing much at all. Oh yeah, you've been doing training, uh, testing. <laughs> yeah, I was. We, well, first time since um, we were racing last year, we get the team managed to get the team together because obviously we've had pretty um, tight restrictions here. Managed to get the team together, do a first day riding, second day warming up, full on just neck spasm and locked up. So yes. been off the bike for like 10 days now. Oh, shit. Sure. Yeah. When are you going to be back riding? Probably in a few days, I reckon. It shouldn't take too long. It's released it a little bit. But just been e-biking too hard. Yeah, I think it is too many miles. <laughs> too much <laughs> power through the neck. <laughs> <laughs> just too many descents. Yeah. But no, I, was, I just I don't know, I think. Just, I was so excited to get back with the team yeah. and the week before was super sunny. So I was riding loads and I just, I haven't really rested. It's so hard when you're at home to like set aside yeah. rest. It's just been constant. So I think it was the only way I could just. And you guys been riding some dirt jumps and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. That's where I seen you guys where we had our. Yeah. <laughs> really profound chat about the state of the world and racing and <laughs> sport and everything. And that's was like the main reason I was like, oh, we should get back into the studio and chat about it. You're a little bit on the fence about it, I think, but here we are. Yeah, some juicy topics coming up. <laughs> Stay yeah. with us. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, yeah, we talked about all sorts of stuff, which I thought was pretty interesting as like a male, hearing some of like your stories and thinking of stuff from like your perspective that I would like, I'd hold my hands up and like never really mm. give it too much thought. Yeah. So to hear what you guys were saying, and I was like, I think it'd be cool to like talk about it. And one of the things we talked about was like prize money, equal pay and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So to start things off with prize money, I chatted to Chaos, your brother, about it in the mm -hmm. podcast this morning. But it'd be cool to kind of like go over that again. How does the sort of structure of prize money work in like your experience in downhill? Um, so... <laughs> The, to win a World Cup, the prize money there and then is three and a half thousand um, pounds or euros, mostly euros. Okay. Um, which is obviously like a good chunk of money, but when you put in perspective all the privateers and the amount they go through and the amount of money they spend out of their own savings to get there, um, it just doesn't really justify why you're there <laughs> like yeah. it's just not i don't personally... like it's like you could literally win and you're still gonna lose money you're still gonna lose out like you you can go there as a privateer work your ass off all winter put all your savings into getting there win a world cup and then that not even cover half of what you've had to pay to get there in the first place so it's pretty savage but like I've said to you before, it is, it's always so hard to sit there and moan about the best job in the world because it's just not... Yeah. It's getting that balance right, I suppose, isn't it? Because yeah. you're not necessarily saying, like, you're not happy to do it. It's just saying no. that there it's could just, be improvement. It's like, obviously, and then you watch tennis and it's like, a bonus of three million. <laughs> but obviously, like you said, like, <clears throat> viewers and all that stuff. And I don't know what it would take to kind of, um, yeah, raise the bar a little bit with mountain biking. Yeah, and I guess... Um, it sounds like the pay is, is probably actually like one of the only sports that you hear of where this, the pay is actually, or the prize money is the same in the men and the women. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like it's only that because it's just like super low for both rather than... Well, I'm going to have to check because I know, I know the overall prize money was equaled and Crankworks is equal, Yeah. but I'm not sure if the World Cups are equal. So I'm going to have to do my research after this. Um, but... It's pretty low, isn't it? Let's yeah. be honest, it's not. For, I think for like the for like the scale of what the event actually is, and like you say, it's not like like you, it, it's easy to compare it to like say tennis or something, but and it's not necessarily like a good mm. comparison. So it's obviously more money in it, but the fact that there is actually events like Crankworks, yeah, that not to again who Crankworks are probably smaller events in terms mm -hmm. of like what the downhill is within Crankworks. And they're paying like I don't know what yeah, it is, like twenty five really grand good, yeah, or fifteen really grand or something. Money. Considering World Cups is meant to be the elite, yeah, so the pinnacle of 
uh, mountain biking and racing. It's literally meant to be the Formula One of mountain biking. And yeah, it just doesn't really, I think the way the UCI go about some of the events and stuff and, you know, prize money and stuff like that doesn't really represent how much effort all the riders put in, you know, whether you're privateer or pro and like all the teams and stuff. Yeah, so and then, so in terms of like that being the, the sort of top spot, do you know like roughly how it gets spread out, like down the positions? So say if you come fifth, what yeah. does that like equate to? It like goes from like all the way down to over top 15 or top 10 Ooh. and then you get like a tenner. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it drops <coughs> off pretty far. Yeah. But like, like I was saying, like for me, because I'm on a pro team and I have my salary and my sponsors, that's something I don't have to worry about. Yeah. Whereas, like I was saying, privateers, literally, if there were bigger prize money and if it was spread across more, it would probably, you know, one, be more attractive for people, like hopefully would bring in more riders to race and maybe push us all on a bit more. But again, we don't turn up. That's not why we race. Yeah. So it's like, it's just so hard to go in and moan about that when you're not there because of that. But you still need to at least have a certain amount of money to yeah. actually get to the races, I suppose. Well, it would be nice to have a little bit more for risking your life every single run. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely a hard one to kind of gauge. I guess the money does like have to come from somewhere and as long as like the riders are willing to do it, That's the thing, it's not necessarily going to change. Money. We yeah. happily do it for that money. Um, so I guess it's fine for them to give us that sort of thing. Do you think there's like from your girl's perspective in the sort of structure of female downhill racing <laughs> here comes a dog <laughs> Do this is the first dog we've ever had on the podcast never again Oscar's, oh my God. Oscar's like piping up because he's heard he's he's heard a question that he wants to Time to shine, I'm afraid. Soon. We Soon. need to get him a chair. <laughs> oh, yeah. Soon, Oz. Shoot. So you were saying? Uh, I forgot what I was saying. Thanks, dog. Something about our, our in our opinion, something. Yeah. Is, is there any like sort of if you just say forget about the prize money for a bit and actually just think of like the structure of racing and qualifying? Is there anything in your experience you think could be like tweaked or changed to make it easier for? younger girls coming into World Cup racing. What, what we were saying before about the practices, how yeah. they've like split the top women up with the rest of the field, which does seem like a bit. So you basically, if you're like top five female, you qualify at a different time to if you're not top five. And you have different practices, don't you? Yeah, you have mm -hmm. different practice, practices. Yeah. yeah, so top five women ranked from the year before now going into this first race will be in a practice with the top a hundred and something men which again doesn't make sense because um the percentage is just well off <laughs> yeah but um so yeah so they will go into which starts at 10 and oh no starts at 12 finishes at three and then we go straight into time practice and um, the last year I was in B practice, which starts at eight, finishes at 12. And then whether you have time practice or not depends on your ranking as well. So ah, okay. it's all... Oh, so you literally don't get time practice if you're... Some people don't. Right. I think yeah. that the men depends on how many entries there are. Right. So you might scrape in to time practice. And the women is top 15 women get time practice I think or top, no top 10 maybe but I then, remember always being like in and out of time practice and it was always like yeah I was always pissed because and then you miss a lot of practice but so, so the day after so race day the girls we have an hour practice from eight to nine so that was me last year and then uh which didn't really make sense is the girls in a practice could start earlier mm -hmm. but then extend into the other practice and then the girls from B practice could then go and do one run in a 15 minute window at like 11 or something. Oh, okay. So you got another run, but you'd have to do your practice in the morning, <clears throat> then do another run, then wait again till your race run. Okay, cool. It's 
all a bit of a mess, like yeah. especially last year in October when it was freezing cold, nobody really knew what was going on, all the new rules. Um, and like for the men as well, they're the, in the same boat, but obviously there's a bigger... Bigger pool of them, basically. There's a bigger pool of them, so it's almost more achievable because there's like, there'll be a hundred in, in um, uh, what's it called, A practice, and 60 of them qualify. Whereas ours, it's there's five of us and 15 of us qualify, so... Yeah. Really yeah, it's just uh, it's, it sounds like it's basically like just a real tipping point, basically. And if you can kind of break into that, it yeah. it can be good. But then I guess you were saying there, like you had an experience of this year because you were injured, of going back and kind of almost getting a feel for what it was was like when yeah, you were sucked. just starting and realizing. <laughs> yeah. Do you think you did kind of take it for granted then for the last few years? Well, I only went, I only, <laughs> I only did it once because I got ah, injured okay. two years in a row, so. Um, the only time, uh, actually I didn't even do it. Yeah, I did it once snowshoe when I came back from my injury and obviously I was still, so you get protected, don't you? Cause I won the first World Cup of the year. Um, I was protected for the rest of the year or something like that. So when I came back to snowshoe at the end of the year, I still managed to have good oh, practice, yeah. okay. but then I did my ankle following year and I came back and I was like, it was mad because before my injuries, I was obviously top ranked and then I come back and all of a sudden I was like back at the pile, mm-hmm. which is fair enough, but... Just gives you a bit of a taster of what it's, what it's like. It's, it's just mad. Like Vera was saying, like you come in like not having much experience and then you're at the disadvantage again by going into the yeah. practice, which isn't... It's mad because it's not the end of the world, but it's not like... It's the fact that the girls only have like five, I think, women in. It's not very fair when you come in. And it doesn't really... It, it's just young girls probably don't look at it and be like, oh, cool, like, I yeah, want to go and race at that, yeah. 8 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> For yourself, Vera, as like someone who... Oh, I said you're breaking into the top five. You said top ten. <laughs> <laughs> I was never breaking into the top five. <laughs> um, does that kind of resonate with you when you look back at like your time as a racer and think of like how the structure of racing made it difficult for you to break yeah, yeah. to break through into that like sort of yeah, yeah. top tier definitely and also mentally like what tiny how tiny just mentioned the men have like obviously there's a lot more men racing and people are like oh it's relative you know like there's this many men and this many qualify but like mentally if there's if you have to try and break into the top five and you're like just just come out of junior some random girl yeah. who's just been racing nationals and like really wants to do good it's like how am I ever going to do that? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And yeah, like we, what we talked about before, the points and um, people like travel all over the place just to try and get the points to get, go there. And then once they're there, they're still on the back foot because they don't have as much practice or not as good a time yeah. and stuff like that. Do yeah. you think like the location, like where you actually live in the world is a factor or is that something they're quite good at like in terms of like qualifying points? Is it, would you say, like, say someone like yourself coming from New Zealand, is it harder logistically and cost wise to gain the points, or is there still plenty of events that you can um, go to, like in Australia, for example? I think, like, le- legit, like, to gain the actual points was probably easier than it is in the UK because it seems like over here, barely any races, if in, if, do any have points? No, we our nationals used to have points, but they don't have points yeah. anymore, so you'd have to travel, oh, you'd have to go abroad. Yeah, to go on, try and yeah, get some yeah. points. And we had like a few races that you could get points at, and I was lucky because there was only like three women racing, so I was pretty much guaranteed points. But then logistically to get to the World Cups was like a nightmare. Yeah, because <laughs> you just have to get it's to Europe. So basically. expensive. You might like, get lucky in like one or two, maybe. Yeah, happen in like and just getting the flight over to Europe and back is like new levels of mm-hmm. money when you're like <laughs> eighteen and trying to work. It's definitely job. favored for Europeans, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I suppose that is just a hard one because, like, maybe the mo- the sort of bulk of the venues and the riders and stuff are there, so it has to, yeah. to kind of be concentrated there. But. And it does make sense because, obviously, that it's summer in that part of the world. If you went to New Zealand at that time, it would be, yeah. you know, the yeah. chances that weather would be really bad are quite high. But the thing is, is, like, they could, like, obviously, we're always knocking on the door for more races. Like, mm. we want more races, we want more venues, but the venues have to pay to host the World Cup. Yeah. And I think it's quite a bit of money. So obviously, if they're not a big resort that makes a lot of money, then 
there's no chance of having a World Cup now. Yeah, that's interesting that because I think like that's potentially like one of the reasons, like I know yourself, you said that you're almost like nervous about coming out and speaking about certain issues because you think people are going to say, oh, you got it so easy. You only do seven races a year. But it's interesting that like you guys and pretty much every other racer I speak to wishes there was like 15 races in the year kind of thing. Oh, yeah, it would like it would be so much better for the sport yeah. in every way like we'd and get more exposure happy, yeah, you'd we'd be happy to do more races but yeah like. definitely it's like six races a year is just probably justifies our salaries yeah. <laughs> you know it's just like there's not it's not enough racing like yeah. we want to race more and we always get like i think a lot of the fans want more races mm. but logistically and like obviously financially there are a lot of venues that just wouldn't be able to afford to host a uci mountain bike world cup do you think like after having the double headers last year that's something that might happen in the future just generally not actually because of covid if you know what i mean um well so far we haven't been told that we're going to have that format again okay. but two races have already been cancelled so who knows it might happen <laughs> Is that something you guys would like, do you think? Or would you rather just have more but on consecutive weekends and stuff? Um, it could work. It definitely could work. But I think, did we talk about this last time? I can't remember. I think we would need like rest in between yeah. the two races because it was just back to back like four days. Two, Especially when it's like straight off the well back of yeah. like lockdown as well. And like it was like minus 10. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was it was savage. The amount of racing condensed into such a small amount of time. But I definitely think it was exciting. It definitely provided more, like, I felt like a beginner again. Like, I was learning it all again. Like, I didn't know my routine. I didn't know what to do, where to be. So it, that side of it was quite fun. And I think it gave people, I think more people enjoyed that format. I like to just switch on for the one race. So personally, I prefer the other format. But I wouldn't be unhappy if yeah. we had yeah, yeah. double headers for sure. I think if we get more racing, then... So yeah, as a, as a fan, I thought it was class, but all I have to do is watch it. So I can't exactly like <laughs> it was it. pretty exhausting. Yeah. But like I say, they could do it over just a longer period or yeah. like just have a rest day. But then I'm like, oh, maybe people would be worse off because like the bodies would just shut down yeah. in between. I guess you've got to be careful like injuries and stuff, maybe more like to get injured. if. Yeah, but I think, you know, everyone's got a lot of experience, I think everyone dealt with the races really well considering what was thrown at us and nobody really knew what was happening and stuff so I think we still I definitely had a good good season you know not the best results but I had a yeah. lot of fun so yeah it's definitely an interesting one to move on to like that's obviously like racing prize money and stuff which is a bit more like sort of measurable I guess another question which we kind of briefly talked about before is the sort of contentious subject of salaries in riding and maybe the inequality within salaries when it comes to men and women is that something that you think there's definitely a problem with in mountain biking <laughs> tani or vero <laughs> <laughs> for me this is a hard one to answer because um like i think it's definitely like i'm not racing and stuff so like for the kind of niche thing that i do every year it's growing so much and there's so much more support for mm -hmm. like more and more women each year, which I think is awesome. So I don't really have anything bad to say about it. I definitely, for so many years I tried to race and, and like tried to do it. I really wanted to be a pro racer and stuff, but I never made any money off it. <clears throat> if anything, I just like got more and more broke in a race. <laughs> but um, since I like kind of, since I dropped that and I'm doing the kind of like media free ride sort Stop. of thing racing <laughs> yeah um <laughs> since then it's like i started off not making any money and just making videos anyway because i enjoyed it and then now like i've just moved out of a council house so that's cool <laughs> and like every year it's kind of is there's more and more support yeah. like for me and for other women so i'm i think it's heading in a good direction but i i know I've, there's a lot of female races i've had this chat with and they feel like quite differently about it so. it is hard for us to talk about isn't it because we don't want to come across as hypocrites especially because yeah. we're doing well for ourselves but what do you consider as well like obviously on instagram we we're going to show all our highlights like we have like these jumps in the garden but you know sponsors pay for that we've got all these bikes again sponsors do kit sponsors yeah cars sponsors like it's just like 
most of it. Yeah, maybe I've picked the wrong two girls to do this podcast with in terms because you guys are all the like. We are in, like I'm in a very good position, yeah. and especially with the team set up that I have. But I think in general, the value of mountain biking is all over the place. Like no one knows, especially I think like Vera was saying for racers, no one talks about it. No one knows what their value is. So men and women, like no one knows who's gone for what, who's signed for what. And I don't know why or where. I think because it's hard for us to talk about because we're so stoked to be doing what we love as a living and no way in, in hell would we want to moan, sit there and moan about what we do because like, I love what I do. Yeah. But for some reason, I don't know why, there's this like speculation around the fact that mountain bikers, maybe it was Aaron Gwynn's article on pink bike that he was on a million a year yeah. but <laughs> imagine <laughs> like, are you guys not on a million a year <laughs> that mountain bikers are paid a shit ton of money yeah. so i did that assumptions thing and they were saying the thing that came back constantly about these assumptions was that mountain bikers you know pro mountain bikers were rich um they mid-pack riders if one of them stood out mid-pack riders on 100k yeah. And I could not believe it. I, so I was screenshotting some of these answers and sending them to other pro athletes, like yeah. a lot of them men. Um, and it sparked up a lot of conversations between other pros as well. And like I say, it is hard for me because I feel like I've managed to kind of, it's so hard, like work in a way that I'm very round, I'm a very rounded athlete and I've managed to have personal sponsors create relationships with them but that's because dad was so worried that i would never make a career out of mountain biking yeah. so there was that worry and like we say we don't know what the gaps are between men in general i think like the top 10 men will be making decent amount of money but again what's like i don't know. yeah i guess that's a difficulty because it's like it's not like football you know when you hear like oh blah blah, blah signs mm. for whoever for like yeah. 150 grand a week like yeah. i guess unless you guys <laughs> And again, Oscar like, we like, don't want to sit here and be, like, I... Do you guys my, talk about, like, what? Would you just talk to, to each other yeah, about, yeah, like, what you're doing and stuff? I think that's why and... we've done all right as well, because we've spoken yeah, to each yeah. other. And, I don't know, just chatting a bit. And last year, so last year, I found out a few things of what some of the men were on. So, obviously, asked for a pay rise from other people sponsors mm -hmm. because at the time like didn't really understand why there was a difference but like I said I've always been super stoked you know I feel like I'm so lucky to be doing what I'm doing um you know my sponsors take such good care of me so I would never turn around and you know be like yeah but I guess like even I guess the thing is though in terms of the sort of gender equality it doesn't matter if you're in a great position and getting paid x amount of pounds you deserve that. If you were to then find out someone's getting like, or if the guy in uh, a male in that equivalent sport yeah. is getting like, say, twice as yeah. much as you, well, it's, funny. it's not like you're just because you're stoked on that doesn't mean that's no. still not an issue there because that's still an, that is still inequality. Yeah. It's like it's, that's where I really struggle because obviously what I do is so random. I can't really yeah. no one can compare themselves to each other. But yeah, if, you can't. It's not if, like first place compares themselves to first yeah. place. Yeah, so but like if you think about. Uh, like I, I'm just so great. Like I just still feel like, how is this happening to me? So yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to complain about it to any sponsors or yeah. anything. But like, I do quite often find out how much a guy will be on mm -hmm. who's, you know, me. Like media wise, they do a lot less than me, have a lot more, less followers than me, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and then every now and then you're like, wow, like that's mad mm. how is there such a big gap but i think the, yeah the more we've started talking and like i would talk to pom pom and pom pom spoken to my dad and there was like a few more conversations going on and i think what really struck it for me is like oh my god if i'm meant to be one of the highest ranked like as we were saying racing is the pinnacle of the sport they're meant to be yes. you know that's probably why people think we're getting paid a lot of money and I'm meant to be one of the fastest female racers in the world at the minute and, you know, one of the most followed on Instagram. So I have that side as well. If this is my salary, what are the girls that are ranked lower and what does that mean for 
the future of our sport. So that was one thing that really pushed me forward into fighting for my corner and for my salary. So, cause like we said, I don't do it. We don't do it for the money. Like obviously we need a salary so that we can live, yeah. but I'm still at mum and dad's mum cook, <laughs> mum cooks yeah. for us. Like I'm, I'm really, really lucky in my position, but that's not the same for everyone. And like we say, privateers try and come and make a living out of it. And it's just, yeah, I thought, I thought I I want to inspire you know the next generation. I want more girls to come and ride. And if this is it, how it is at the minute, it's never going to happen. Yeah. So it's not all about the money, mm. but it at but some it point it <laughs> has something. to be. Yeah, like, yeah. Not obviously. I always say I would still race if there was no money involved. But a lot of people we were saying this. So many people say to us like, "Ah, oh, we would do your job for free." It's like well. You wouldn't because you wouldn't be able to live. Yeah. <laughs> like you can't. Uh, yeah. yeah, you can't do our job for free because yeah. you need to get paid. You need to go and pay your bills. You need to go and pay yeah. for food. Like you can't do it for free. And that's when you get you get so many privateers that have two jobs. You yeah, used yeah. to you used to work what two or three jobs and you were still. <laughs> you used to work yeah, in horrible. Yeah, yeah, and 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 you the were other considered th- pro. Yeah, and the other thing is. Yeah, and if you were to yeah, but if you were to ask like anyone following you like oh like. How much do you think I'm on you? They probably like thinking that you're on like a decent wage mm. when you're actually working a part time yeah. job at the same time. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, you see yeah. her at pizza on Saturday night. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> my hat. Just this. Just me a pizza. Like, can't be yeah. her. It must just be like a lookalike. <laughs> I imagine you have a very good customer service. Not gonna lie. No, I was just cutting the pizzas out <laughs> the bag. <laughs> I was cutting it out the bag so. <laughs> James at Red is looking for someone for the catering stall, so maybe you should. Oh get yeah, he wants to make pizza. All time sake. <laughs> no, um, what we saying? Yeah, but people are like, oh, we, I do your job for free, like, but they don't actually know what a job involves. Yeah, and it is the best job ever, but the mm. it's not all fun and games. Definitely not, and we do a lot of hard work behind the scenes. Yeah, I think the like, reality is like you get paid less than what people think and you probably do a lot more work than what yeah. people think. And the thing, like for me, I should probably show a little bit more on my Insta what I actually get up to, but because I'm like, oh, people like to see me riding. So I'll just post, when I go for a ride, I'll just yeah. post that. And then that's all that people think that I do. Yeah. They're like, oh, you're just riding your post bike. you crying in front of your laptop yeah. and trying to invoice people. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's vlogging, and, so you get to get involved in that. And with the equality thing, like, there's the pay gap and then but there's also a lot of other equality based sort of things that come into it like i last year my contract with marin was up and there was a quite a few companies that i was talking to for the next year and there's a lot of amazing people in the industry but there are some some people that treated like just i knew for a fact i know a lot of guys that ride one company for example i know a lot of guys that ride for it um and I know how they deal with their boss and it's all chill. But when this guy talked to me, it was insane. Like well, the way did. he sort of talked down to me and, and like just didn't treat me like he would them was mm-hmm. mad. Like even though he offered me a sick deal, I was like, absolutely not. Like, <laughs> yeah, mad. you'd rather yeah. take like less money or like the same money from someone that you can like tell. Definitely, yeah, definitely. definitely. Oh, and and he, I could, I could, he basically said to me like, that this company needed a certain percentage of women on their team because, you know, to be PC and stuff in this day and age. Um, oh, like rather so than just wanted, saying, like, we actually like, than, we want you actually, for who you are. Yeah, like, he wasn't really into me in my running. He just needed women on the team. Yeah. Um, Thanks, so I was like, like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. I mean, yeah, it's, I don't know. It's like, <clears throat> yeah, it's just the money topic. It's just so, it's so awkward for us to talk about, I guess. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's like, and... <laughs> because like we I've had brands that have you know luckily I've had like the sponsors that I work with now I wouldn't change for the world yeah. like I'm so happy with who I work with and stuff but I've had previ- like in the past we've had some really good sponsors as well but like when I was younger and not doing quite as well and you know dad was pushing my corner it just there wasn't really much there at all like we've had some we've just been lucky enough to have personal relationships with people like meeting them yeah and having that personal relationship because i think without that it probably wouldn't have like much wouldn't have happened um with when it comes to excuses that you might hear about maybe like why 
a female be getting paid less than a man? Like, what are some of the, what are some of the ones that you would hear from people that are like pretty, that I would mean, kind of catch you? Like I say, like, from my own personal experience, it hasn't been bad, but I know people where it has been bad. And um, I think the main one for racing that we hear all the time is that obviously the percentage of women compared to men is tiny, which isn't an excuse. It's a valuable, <laughs> yeah, it's a valuable, um, it's, it's so hard because it's, um, it's true. Yeah. Like, you know, my percentage of followers like are 85% male or something ridiculous yeah, like that. Yeah, it's probably like same as, I think that'd be similar to myself. Yeah, so, you know, it go, just goes to show there's not a load of... But I don't have an influence on just the women. Yeah, I, I don't race a different track to the men. I don't put less effort in than the men. You know, there's all these things that... Yeah, I think the, the, the sort of factor should be, like, who follows you rather than... Like, they, like you say, they all follow, it doesn't matter whether yeah, they're men I or women, like, and they're all gonna still, and it's back, they're gonna buy the bike because they see you ride the bike and stuff, whether they're men yeah, or women. Yeah, but I'm a racer. Yeah. This is what also brands, some brands will do, is they put you in a category. So essentially with races, top races especially, they're getting the two in one deal. Yeah. It's because they get the media with it. Yeah, yeah. But that's not what I'm paid for. I'm not, pay I'm not a media athlete. Hmm. But, but I still you are still given that. You <laughs> are still given that. Have but to do some, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, you'd say, I'd say you are. But you're both well, no, really. Because, yeah. like, that would be, that would probably be a brand's, so a lot of brands will be like, oh yeah, well we'll give you, you know, you know X amount for. I don't do sponsored posts. Like I, I'm, I just don't like them. That's not me. <coughs> yeah, yeah, you're not doing like that. But Hashtag for example, app. people will be attracted to the media side of of me, whereas um, a lot of big brands, like I'm paid to race a bike. I'm not yeah. paid to put up an Instagram selfie, which I was guilty of the other day. But nothing wrong with that. But the but the thing is, like, I. I, when I race, or even now, I hear so much, so many people say that. I said the most common one, like, there's not as many women, so they shouldn't mm. get paid as much. But one, it's not Tani's fault that there's not as many women as yeah, there are men. Still doing, you're still doing and the same thing. And she trains <laughs> just as hard as the guy. Like, she puts just yeah. as much effort I in I train more than Kate and Kate. Yeah. <laughs> so I actually like, didn't even <laughs> think, like, that, when I was, like, thinking of what those arguments would be, I didn't even, that wasn't even one that I would even have thought of. What? As being an argument about, like... I thought like the main argument would be like, oh, it doesn't maybe generate, or are they saying it doesn't generate as much like sales or because of, right? I never thought it'd be a case of like, just because yeah, well, there's less. <laughs> yeah, but it's like, I thought that it'd have been like, no, I didn't really think of like, cause it shouldn't really matter how many people do it because mm. you're still having to do, you're still yeah. putting well, the same like, hours in. Like, like I've, I've heard like, yeah, you're, watching it. yeah, and you're only, you're only being recognized because there's less of you, like, yeah. you know, you're yeah, stick that's out. Cause, one, yeah, yeah so. But obviously we're talking about like, cons here yeah i feel so bad because i feel like we're just ranting and moaning yeah, about fine. our sport but it's just there are like these are the sides of things that people mm -hmm. just don't see yeah and or don't like just miss because why would we mention it like like i said we're not gonna moan about a dream job yeah. online like no one likes that yeah i don't even moan sometimes and i get <laughs> <laughs> every like when the, the time i get the worst comments are the most horrible things said to me is when I literally am not, not even life. I'm not trying to do anything debatable or anything questionable but like yeah. something super random and then I'll just get a mad oh, hate for it like what oh, <laughs> and then the guys just get mad love for it <laughs> why <laughs> yeah I was like yeah we shrubs. Stop skidding. <laughs> pressure police <laughs> just because I'm a girl apparently I have really low tie pressure so I need to touch my rig a little bit <laughs> yeah. but then yeah i don't want to rant again as well but all all the i don't know about you but all the negative comments i get they're never from women ever like i've never had one bad one from a woman it's always i don't know why some guys just it's usually hate. but let's be honest it's usually like either 12 year old boys or 60 year old men I think that's almost social media where it's basically like <laughs> you've got so many people like probably giving you good comments. People like they but just you want only it. notice the bad yeah, and they're like, you might actually. It's like that's, yeah, that's like that right. guy I was chatting about who wrote us a message and it's like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. nearly messaging back and I was like, 
It'd be pretty shit to not have like message message back yeah, all yeah, the yeah, positive yeah. comments that we have. Yeah. yeah. And you're kind of fixating it. on That's this negative it. stuff. That's why the other no, day, the other day I was like, I put on my stories, I was like, oh, I just want to take a minute to like thank everyone that actually follows me because I'll often like sometimes I'll screenshot not because I want to out someone, but because I'd like to share. Because even if you're a pro and you're doing well, you still get hate. I don't want anyone yeah. to be discouraged when they get hate for doing a turn or whatever. So I like to share that side of things. But it's just like, sometimes I feel that I look at that too much and I don't yeah. thank the people that are actually, you know, giving me this following and giving yeah. me a it's job and like yeah. and who have supported me from the very beginning so I actually yeah it took a second to be like you know what <laughs> yeah because I guess they're not paying for it but you're still getting they're still giving you your time I suppose in terms yeah. of actually watching it yeah. so when it comes to what you would hear from certain people saying like if they're in the argument of like say all oh, men sell more bikes or men are more viable what would be your sort of rebuttal to that like I said, I don't think it's completely false because oh, I don't know because I feel like like for Fox, for example, I know that I sell a lot of stuff for them and like we but they treat me really well. We do a load of stuff together. Um, so yeah, like I don't feel like I would sell less than say Loris Berger if anything I'd sell more. But obviously he's now not on Fox. But again, like I don't, I don't know how much he's on or how much yeah. he's being paid. So it's all just, and like we say, we never really. It's bad probably because maybe we should care a bit more. But we've always like it's so normal, so normalized, and you're just so grateful to get yeah. money for doing what you love that you're just like woo, like yeah, this yeah. is great. And then obviously, you go to pay your car insurance and you're like oh probably should have asked for a little bit more <laughs> like it's just stuff like that yeah. i don't really hear that one too often I've, i don't think i've ever really heard someone say women sell less product yeah, well, not to me personally I, yeah. I but wasn't like, saying that i, I wouldn't know what to say <laughs> no, i'd be like that, uh, is, maybe they do. that is a thing yeah. but like i would yeah i'd be like don't know yeah <laughs> like, but it's, but like, that's the thing maybe yeah. we're so a cust- is that the word a customized yeah I guess a custom. No, accustomed. accustomed. Yeah, yeah you're to basically knowing, used to, to the, yeah, yeah, to like. Which doesn't make it right. <laughs> no, but I just think it, to us it's so normal. It's like you just. I and I guess the reality is, it's like um, mountain biking is quite unique in that. Well, with like downhill, for example, it's the same broadcast and stuff like that. It's not like it's it's just a very hard one to actually. Well, I guess no one truly knows the answer of like how much value you're getting out of the female race and how much value you're getting out of like the male race because mm, yeah. it's not like it's not like um, I don't know men's football compared to women's football where they'll see more people oh, going to the men's match than the, the, the stuff, yeah. female match or whatever. So it's all kind of into one. So it's like oh, I guess that. the two answers you just don't really they don't know. Yeah, what's well, I guess the it's value. like you, you go to Fort William and there'll be more people sit at the bottom when the final men are coming down than the final women. I guess yeah. that's yeah, yeah. the equivalent. But I guess you could argue that's just because it's at what time it's at kind of thing. It's like more... Yeah, but if we were after, everyone would leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. When I was racing, people used to tell me all the time, well, I don't really enjoy watching the women. Like, just to be honest with you, I don't find it exciting and stuff. Thanks for being honest, mate, but you didn't have to be. (laughs) Cool, Cool. just going to go cry in the corner. It's fine. (laughs) Like, some companies, though, you know, if you think about it, there's a lot of hateful girls who just, like, pose with their bikes and do that kind of stuff, which I think, like, if that's what you're into, sweet. But there's, if you think about that, like, does that sell bikes? Because a lot of companies are kind of, in, or some are inclined to sponsor a lot of girls who do that. And guys who do that as well, to be fair. And then others are like, well, that's not going to sell bikes. We're going to just sponsor people who shred. So I don't know. Yeah, it's hard to get that bounce, wasn't it? Because yeah. like, just because you have like, say, X amount of followers doesn't mean it's that like. like you're gonna it's sell like we don't gonna... know enough. There's not, yeah. much, there's yeah, not yeah. enough data. There's not yeah. enough people that speak out. There's. Yeah. Everyone's too nice. Yeah. <laughs> but do you not think, like, even if, say, they did have all the data and they knew or they said, well, you know what, men are, say, accounting for, say, 60% of the sales or the conversion, do you not still think that bike companies 
if they knew that, which they don't, should still go out their way to make sure it's equal, if you know what I mean? Or do you think, like, if that was the case, it's fair enough to be... But the reality is that there's definitely less women that ride. So if men account for 60% of the sales, that does kind of make sense because there's probably way more men. But you're buying the same bikes, though, kind of, pretty much. Yeah. Because yeah, you're, you're not just you're not just selling bikes. I mean, to, like, you're not just marketing bikes to females. You're marketing bikes yeah, yeah. to everyone. Yeah. So it's like. I yeah. think like obviously that's why we work so hard to try and get more women involved in mm. our sport. You know, we want to make it equal, and that's the way of making it equal is getting more women. Yeah. Into the sport. It's just it's just so hard because I reckon prize money should be way bigger and equal. Yeah. And then the salaries, it's obviously like we say, it's kind of, I don't know, is that understandable? I feel like if somebody said to me, well, Luik is selling like 80% more bikes than you, I'd be like, well, fair enough. Mm-hmm. Like he's mm-hmm. doing better than me. It's not because, oh, it, like it's because he's selling more bikes than me. Like that's just the way it is. Be- yeah. But yeah, I suppose it's difficult because it depends on like the size of the company and all that. And it's yeah. like certain companies yeah. would be able to, like take maybe take a hit on that and like match yeah. payments or whatever and maybe i guess it's harder if it's like if a smaller it was company like, if it wasn't a an actual problem in the real world yeah it wouldn't be such a problem in mountain biking yeah like, like, this is just like one and, yeah this is just one segment yeah. of like whole society not, i mean it? because there's not even equal pay when a man and a woman have the exact same jobs and like i don't know as <laughs> lawyers and stuff for us when it's you know, we are doing the same, but potentially selling less, then it's obviously going to be worse, surely, than mm-hmm. that. If, I don't know, if you put it into perspective. Yeah, it is just an absolute, like, minefield to try yeah. and, like, challenge. It's a good chat about it. I definitely think, like, I would hold my hands up and say, like, like, I studied, like, business and economics and stuff at uni. Mm-hmm. And when I finished uni, I was very much, like, the market dictates everything. So it's, like, if, if whoever's, like, generating, like, that much in sales they should get paid for it but I think like as you get older like and as you like speak to different people it's funny how your views can change if you know what I mean yeah. so I think that's like quite a good like an important thing is to like rather than maybe like vilify someone for having their flawed view or whatever like try to actually like educate them mm. on it and like speak to them about it rather than being like oh yeah you're, you're sure. a dick for like thinking that because I think everyone's like can change yeah I reckon what you said definitely about if society was, well, it's changing, but if yeah. if that was different, then it would definitely have an impact on the mountain bike world, I reckon. No, we're tiny, aren't we, in comparison yeah. to... But it's still like, it's a bit, it's like kind of symbolic of like the whole society. So it's like mm. everyone's kind of fighting their own battles in their own little like yeah. sort of industry. I guess like one massive... First, sorry, massive. first of all, the men need to be paid probably. <laughs> like, yeah, and then we'd get paid more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess it's like a unique situation where you feel like both the men and the women are are getting paid right. I guess like a really important thing, which again is like a massive factor in the sort of whole society is the fact that females have to, or don't have to, they are the people who like give, uh, come pregnant and give give birth. birth. (laughs) Got there in the end. It's pretty nuts when you think of that in terms of your career, like... (laughs) 20 to 35 or whatever is like <clears throat> that's when your careers are and that's when traditionally a woman would have a child yeah how do you think there's like how does that even work within the sort of mountain bike industry are you ever like questioned by sponsors about like plans for children because i'm not i'm pretty sure that's not allowed <laughs> in terms of like letting that influence whether or not they're going to take you onto your team or anything is that something you've ever experienced before I don't you know. Um, Rachel Strait, Kyle yeah. Strait's wife. She yeah. recently had a baby, and she put something on Instagram before she had a baby about um, how so many people have been asking her, like, is she still going to be sponsored? Is she still, you know, all that kind of stuff? And she was just like, just to clarify, my my, my sponsors are stoked. Um, just because I'm having a baby doesn't mean that I'm not any less valuable to the company and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I thought that was cool, and I've never really seen that before. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, because it'd be pretty. It's like such a difficult one because. I think um, a good example of it was like Danny Hart won in Snowshoe, I think, mm-hmm. when he was like 
I guess you could say he's pregnant. Like he was waiting. His wife was pregnant. Yeah. And it's funny just to think like if the roles were reversed, there was just like he wouldn't be yeah, at that yeah. race getting getting his get, no, getting, his, getting his bonuses, getting his <clears throat> prize money. Yeah, even yeah. That's only. But like you see in Olympics, some women have gone off and had kids and come back and won gold medals. Like mm. I just think mountain biking so small and maybe not as open minded because it is so small. Yeah. But. Why not? I guess if Rage was to come back and smash it, then, like, fair play. Yeah. Like, it wouldn't, to me, it wouldn't, but maybe because I'm a woman, it wouldn't seem weird for her to come back at all. And it doesn't seem odd that she's wanted to start You think, like, all your sponsors would be, like, pretty supportive if you say, if you did decide to do that for, like, because I guess it's not just the pregnancy period. It's, like, you're probably talking, like, two years. Yeah. I at least. I've thought about really this, isn't it? I thought about this like recently, just randomly. <laughs> okay, just Tani's suddenly like thinking about it. Oh my god! Watch it, watch it. I I thought about it recently because it seems like just so many people I know are getting pregnant right now. And I'm like, imagine what like. We're getting old. We're not the youngest. Yeah, anymore. I know. Wow. But like all our mates will be getting married and kids, and we just sit on our bikes. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it'd be hard for a company too, probably, because you're probably not like having a baby and like looking after and stuff. Yeah, you're not. Gonna, you're, you're, yeah, gonna whether, whether you're a racer yeah. or yeah, uh, yes. uh, Instagram writer or whatever, you're you're I only inevitably like, going to be doing less yeah. content. Right? Yeah. Well, I feel like there's definitely a fan, not a fan base, but like a like if you're a media athlete. I feel like there are people that are going to want to follow along that journey. Yeah. I feel like as a racer, they're sponsoring me, they're paying me to go and race. Yeah. Okay. So, for example, when Corona came along in the beginning, um, a lot of sponsors in the industry cut their athletes' pay because they weren't racing. So, I guess that would be the same. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just don't think it would be, I guess... Yeah, I guess at least that would have been equal. Hopefully, would have been equal between men and women, and that like their contracts would be mm-hmm. getting cut as well. Yeah. But I think there would definitely. I don't. Know, I don't think it would be right for mm. a sponsor to to cut your contract just because you're not racing. Mm. Or do you get no? Because when you get injured, like you carry on, but obviously it's up to the individual, isn't it? If you yeah. want to then start racing or carry on racing or whatever. But is there? Have you ever heard of like maternity leave from it? from a pro riding contract or anything like that no it's a text rachel i know i see what rachel well, i guess i guess rachel's in a like it's a difficult or a different situation because their bike sponsor is their bike company so it's not true. necessarily yeah. like true. good time in that <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to uh, contracts and stuff you like you aren't like employees of like that company though are you i think another this is another like not problem, but I've been so blessed with my sponsors because they are so good to me. Other people don't have the same relationship with their sponsors uh, and people get dropped like flies. Yeah. Like, and I'm not, you know, I have, I don't have a bad word to say about my relationship, but if I was to, you know, it could happen to me as well. Like at the end of the day, big brands need to make money and that's what their turnover is. And like, um, Katie Winton yeah. recently posted, um, was doing like a follow her series of, you know, being on one of the biggest pro teams on the circuit to having nothing and them completely dropping her and her having no sponsors. And so I think that's really interesting to see mm. that point of view as well and to have that honesty come from her, I think, because it must have been such a daunting and scary time. Yeah. I suppose like you would hope then if you've had like long lasting sponsors, if you were to say you need to take a break to have a child, that they would just honor their contracts. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I guess it, like for me, I'm not being sponsored for that long, but what I've really realized it's so important to work with companies that where the people at the companies you get along with really well and then mm. for the right reasons and all that kind of stuff. Cause that's what it really comes down to. You never, like I never really deal with the CEO of any company. Yeah, yeah. It's always like, Oh, the people at Santa Cruz are yeah. really sound. I really get along with them. Like, hopefully, they'd support me. If it's always like so like nerve wracking when they get <coughs> when they move on to a different job, though, or something. Yeah, like, no, no. <laughs> Ten no, years of friendship and loving. <laughs> yeah, 
you're like hoping they go to like at least somewhere else and like spin on their industry. Like, oh, we went. I'm like, no, I'm going to get a job like somewhere else, like motorbike band. You're like, oh shit. (laughs) (laughs) Hope the next person likes me. Usually they stay within the industry, so you're kind of alright. Hook you up with a different one. I don't know if it's true, but a while ago there seemed a big brand got a new athlete manager and dropped pretty much everyone and then just took on people. Take all the people from the whole place, country or yeah kind of people we like or something like that so i don't know it's the way the cookie crumbles isn't it yeah yeah that's an interesting well, i've never i've never had thought about having kids really so i've never thought about the yeah. pregnancy thing too to much we always say we're like nah <laughs> so, well, then, apparently something just kicks in when you're like 30 yeah that's what my mom says my mom was always like i was like it was a big no-no for me for ages and then you guys came along and it's the best thing in my life i'm like yeah. is it though because we're really fucking annoying like yeah. <laughs> chaos especially like you sure <laughs> i actually was like i was actually um in the car the other day and i saw some guy like pushing a pram up this like super steep hill and he's just like hating Losing his life and I was just like mm, I don't know if I want any of that Not for a wee while but um in terms of like that's obviously like money and stuff like that you, we have talked about a little bit in terms of just like general attitudes towards you guys as like females do you feel like I know we were joking about it before like we were saying that Cade or Chaos can do something and they just seem to like can't do any wrong whereas like you do something you kind of whether it's on, whether it's on yeah. social media or at events, yeah. is that something you guys observe? For me, on social media is, and and I know for a fact that it's different to the boys because I hang out with boys all the time. We always talk about like our DMs. You know, if we get a, a weird DM, we'll be like, "Oh my god, look at this!" And <laughs> and I like I can't imagine what it'd be like to be a big celebrity because the amount of hate they must get is horrible, and it's so gnarly to deal. With. Like. Oh, every now and then I'll just get a gnarly DM, like something I wouldn't wish on anyone. Just like yeah. super nasty. Out of nowhere. Of yeah. Um, and none of my guy friends, guy riders, or anyone ever get them. Like sometimes someone will literally post something wanting to start beef. Like my boyfriend, Max, sometimes for a joke will post some <laughs> political stuff and he expects to get hate, but like Everyone's I do like, nothing. Yeah, love, man. Yeah, 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 man. I see eye to I eye, feel dude. Yeah, I feel yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh yeah and like it just comes out of nowhere with with me i don't know about you it's it's yeah i've had the odd like horrible message and like i reckon i get like a few comments on like posts that aren't very nice and they are hard to not like i was saying to you earlier like when i signed for canyon someone commented on their post saying like oh sick lineup apart (laughs) apart from chaos and tane I fucking hate those two. They're so ignorant. And I'm like, yeah. what? And it's just mental, which that's like, what, like over a year ago and you're still remembering that. Oh, and you've probably had like that. so I many nice that. comments oh, like oh, since. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you can't remember them. I was like. obviously worried, like, because I try so hard, especially at World Cups, like to give my time to people because I was given the time when I was like young and when I went to the World Cups and I thought, you know, all the people there were so nice and I would really like to inspire people in the same way that you know female athletes inspired me so that means a lot to me and I so obviously I'm always like well at what point have I come across like that like in this whole yeah. podcast actually but no it's just um I know to be fair Cade and Chaos do get quite a bit because do they? yeah I know that Cade Cade got Cade gets a lot well they both get a lot on their racing because you know sometimes they don't particularly get the results they want but they're these free riders so people are like and they're like you can't even stay in your bank when you race like oh like yeah I guess that's potentially because like that you're getting paid they're, they're maybe ride. not getting they maybe like have a crash over but it's combined with the fact that they have like a big following and stuff like that so maybe other riders yeah would look at that almost like being je- like in jealousy maybe yeah, it's mm. just... Um, Which is probably, it's probably almost compared, all of it is. Like we were saying, compared to the love that we get on our posts, yeah. it's so little. Yeah. And usually, to be honest, they're just <clears throat> trolls, aren't they? Like some, yeah. of the, some of the people I've been on are just like, you know, no profile pic, like yeah. no posts, no followers. So it's like, oh, somebody's made this account that actually hate on me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. So I, like, I, I hate Tani. Yeah. <laughs> Most of mine... Oh. Most of my horrible ones aren't even riding related. They're just like pure hate towards me. And I'm just like, what have I done? I think it's because like people, 
see your way of life mm. and would love to do that. And they think, I think because people try and don't manage to do it themselves, they must think that we were like, obviously the stars have aligned. Yeah. But I think that they just think we've had it all easy yeah, and stuff, yeah. which I, I hate saying because like my parents did everything for me and set up all, yeah. but it hasn't come without, like I've had to put in the work to get to where I am because so many people have the same opportunities yeah, and, and maybe more more money in their backgrounds and don't make it. So I think just a lot of people mm. see all the good stuff, don't they, on Instagram, don't, like yeah, we're yeah. saying, don't see the struggle yeah. or, you know, don't see the struggle that my parents went through and then they expect to have the same or have maybe a chip on their shoulder against people that have made it. But like we were saying, it, it can, like, the percentage is so small compared to, like, the amount of yeah, love yeah, yeah. we get on social media, which Definitely. it's just It's just annoying, like, no matter how, like we said before, it's like, no matter how much you try not to, you oh, just can't help. But <laughs> you're just, like, you have this, like, biasness to kind of, like, think about the negative comments more than mm. the positive ones. Yeah. Mm. It's like what I said before when we, like, went riding the other day. Yeah. Met loads of like kids and stuff that were like stoked yeah. and watching us ride. Had quite a few DMs from people that we had met saying, Oh, like thanks for saying hi and stuff. And then you get this one message saying, like, can't believe you ignored my kid earlier. And you're like, Can't for the life like you said before, mm-hmm. I can't think of like when that yeah, situation yeah. even happened, but you just get you like thinking and it's like that's the one you yeah. remember like a week later. Yeah. Which is yeah, like yeah. super shit because yeah. there's it's been so much. You have, like, we're naturally gonna want to defend ourselves, I guess, because yeah. we don't feel like we've done anything on on purpose to piss someone off like I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that so it's apart from chaos I do purposely try and piss <laughs> off but it's just like yeah it's just we never try and do that but it's not just it doesn't happen to I always think you know like Vero said it must be horrible to be a celebrity like because they like I've looked at some of the comments mm. on, the, on their posts and I'm just like there's no way they can look at these so, yes yeah, it seems to be like once you get past like a certain level of like celebrity that like 50, you 50. you go from like no longer being like <laughs> yeah, human yeah. or not and it's just like yeah. everything's oh, well, fair game even forget we, yeah, yeah we discuss mm. just we don't say, go on love oh, island must, or they must I'm a think or forget that we have emotions yeah or, like they must see us as like robots or because i once said to someone oh, what was it the other day we went out on the trials bike ride this and, is a perfect example. And we rode the little quarry behind my house and they've been <coughs> fen all the trees. So all the woodlands destroyed. Um, but we were just on that little mound of rock. Mm. And I posted a clip of me going up on electric bikes and somebody comment, commented um, trail destroyer with like an emoji like that. And like, oh, <laughs> it makes my blood boil. I was like... I had to answer, I was like, I don't shit where I eat. Like, I'm a mountain biker. I love mountain bike trails. We take care of our mountain bike trails. We try and help out when we can. And it's behind my house. Like, all these reasons. And I find myself like, blah, blah, blah. And I like, have to like, <laughs> take a second. Once I've written it out, usually I feel a lot better. And then I just like, I delete like what I've written. And then yeah. I can like, kind of like breathe. But I was just, it was so annoying because that's how mountain bikers are perceived. And then, and then the comment back was, um, it doesn't matter. You're endorsed to sell bikes, not trials bikes. Like therefore, mountain bikers are now going to buy trials bikes and thinks it's okay. Yeah. So that's not my job. Yeah. My yeah. job. Some guy a- obviously had a massive problem with mo- motorbikes or like yeah. had beef with a motorbike in the past or something. I can't, can't. I can't stop people from enjoying other types of riding. Yeah, of course. But I was like, I don't endorse for people riding trials bikes up mountain. Like that sucks. Like that really does yeah. suck. Mate, you would yeah. have the worst ride if you took your mountain bike to that spot that we were going up on the trials bikes. Yeah. <laughs> a little rocky uphill. Yeah, it's yeah, going for a session of trails. <laughs> like, it wasn't even Pretty a mountain bike trail. It wasn't even a mountain bike trail. And it was like, no. three like You have to be a loser to what I ride here. Me and Danny and <laughs> we were like, oh, it's meant long. there. Like. <laughs> yeah, true. But yeah, those are the type of things. And I remember I said, I was like, oh, well, I, I sell mountain bikes and I see loads of mountain bikers riding walkers trails. So does that make that also really shit? Because yeah, yeah. I know it doesn't mean just because some people do it that our whole community does it. Just because there's like in every single part of the world or like a workplace, whatever, there's going to be a dickhead. Like, mm. But that's not my job to stop that one person from being yeah. it. Uh, sometimes you get like, you almost get judged for just because your followers maybe do something. 
doesn't mean that yeah, they expect that's like your have, responsibility. Yeah, exactly. yeah, they expect us to have this responsibility and um, act a certain way. And I guess they just forget that we're human. And we do try. I think sometimes I, I am very much myself on social media. Mm-hmm. But you're not like there are stuff that you won't post Definitely. or you hold back on Definitely. or, you know, we're not saints. Like not everyone's like yeah, you yeah. can't get everything right. But. I just feel like, yeah, they maybe think, forget sometimes that we're just all the same. Like, yeah. And I guess we're like... So <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> it's actually such a bizarre... We just take it for granted. Well, like, it's just accepted as, like, the norm now, but it's pretty insane to think uh, that with Instagram or Facebook, whatever, it's like, all these people do have this, like, direct light. Like, you could probably be, like, mm. sitting watching TV at home at night and, like, these people literally have a direct line Mm, into too. like your consciousness but, if yeah. you know what I mean and mm. it's like I suppose like 10 years ago that just wouldn't have been or maybe yeah, 15 yeah. years ago I always say if I could what do my mean? job without social media I'd snap it up like yeah. that I, would I think say I'd probably, well, probably be the same to her it's like but I would happily go and race yeah. and just drop my social media yeah. I'd ha- I'm, I like social oh oh cables are out <laughs> I um is that alright yeah, yeah. So, um, podcast going after Oscar. That's, <laughs> that's the thing again. Sorry. Like so. <laughs> Tani Seagrave, Vera Sander, welcome to the podcast that again. Wouldn't, wouldn't be a bad thing. Like, so much <laughs> yeah. I feel like we're going to get so many haters. No, no. But you definitely learn, the more hate I get, well for me anyway, the more hate I get, the more I learn to just laugh it off. At the start, it really, <laughs> it really <laughs> cut me up, like super, up. cut me up super bad. But now, some of the messages I get now that they're so horrible. I just, I literally am like, what is happening in this guy's head? I'm like, guys, look at this. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, and then go and cry for a bit. But, yeah. yeah, then I'll cry on my own. Nah. But yeah, whatever. That's part of it, isn't it? Yeah, I guess you just have to learn to kind of. So we say we Like you say, though, it's easier said than done. Like, yeah. You're yeah. just like, oh, don't. But like, I think yeah. you do have to talk about because everyone's like, oh, don't respond. Don't talk yeah. about it. But I think it's important because I do get that. You don't, you shouldn't engage with them. Yeah. But like we said, youngsters coming through social media is their life yeah yeah like they're they're now born into it. it's easy for us to say oh don't look at it don't do this like because i didn't have social media growing up yeah. until i was like what 15 mm. something like that so even that's quite early really when you think about it but yeah kids are literally growing up with social media and i feel like it is good for people to share the negative that they get mm. so that those kids aren't as disheartened Mm. Yeah. when they get negative comments from random people who don't actually know who you are. Did you see Emily Batty put... She yeah. had that video. She put, like, an, a video up. Is, it, is she on Canyon now or something? Yeah, she's on It me. was, like, a new video for, with her on Canyon. And it basically was her training in the gym really hard mixed in with, like, horrible comments that she's had from haters. <laughs> and she's, like, oh, training yeah. real hard. It'll be like, you suck. And then she'll be, like, on the ropes. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, that's cool. Like, she's showing how it actually is for her. And then the video went on pink bike and then she just got slated again on pink bike. I was like, what the fuck? Like you literally ca- cannot win. But I, I thought it was a good, I thought it was a good, in- obviously you shouldn't rise to haters, but I think it's a good insight to show people that it is pretty gnarly for some people. Like the comments yeah. you get, yeah, they do affect you. Yeah, but then there's like, oh, you're moaning, but you've got such a great life, which yeah, I have got a great life. Like I'm not moaning. I'm just <laughs> trying to share experiences. Yeah. Like we said, because that's what kids are growing up with now. Yeah, it's mad. Like when you think like social media is just so insane, and to think of like someone going, oh, "Oscar hates it." Like, yeah, he's not into this chat. He Someone's out there. Yeah. He's like, "Fuck the haters." He must have smelled Look at his heckles, like. mohawks up. Oh, oh. damn! Oh. Oh. <laughs> Still there. I'll put. Do you want me to put him in that room? Speak He'll come as soon as whatever. Ask. Come here. Come here. Shush. Shush, oh. mate. Mental. Oh. <laughs> Can you imagine that camera went down? That's going to be amazing, like, watching this. As the, the cameras will just, like, slightly move every so often. Yeah, every time. Like, we're out of shot now. <laughs> yeah. Just like that. What's up, mate? So we didn't record it or film it. Um, With all that sort of being said, like, what would you... What would be your sort of, with that being said, like what would be your advice to younger boys or girls getting into riding? 
at say like 14 or 15, whether mm -hmm. it's just like as a hobby or if they actually have aspirations to be a professional? Or what would be your advice to like your 15 year old, your 15 year old self looking back? It is funny when you, when you get asked this. It's For like just general advice? Or yeah, or, or like advice in life, but then also more in terms of like your career in mountain biking. I think... That's a super cheesy question, but... No, but <laughs> and like we're going to have cheesy it's answers. Hard <laughs> but I really wish, like only recently have I, I feel like come out of my shell yeah, yeah. and felt like okay with like how I want to dress and even sometimes like in the mountain bike world I feel like I do compromise a little bit but I don't know I would just yeah. tell myself to just like be you like yeah because there's so many times I think growing up I was so intimidated by other other riders and I've always been so shy and I don't know I've always felt quite I guess because it is a male dominated sport quite like alone at times mm. but the like the boys like I said I've always had really like they've been so good to us and they've never made us feel like we're not part of the crew or anything but yeah I just I would just tell my tell myself to not take things so seriously and not really care so much and do you think that like that transition to being like that do you think that's corresponded to better results yeah in your definitely reason? I think yeah it's not like it's not even in just mountain biking it's obviously outside of mountain biking yeah. school like boyfriends, yeah, yeah, yeah. all that sort of thing, like group of friends. <laughs> it's just like ridiculous <laughs> <Yep>. things <laughs> that, like, I think, but you kind of go through that to find who you are. But I just mm. wish when I was younger, I wasn't as stressed out about it or yeah, yeah. like. That is mad when you think back to like, yeah. you're like, I can't believe I was like, at like 19, I was like stressed about that. Yeah, yeah like, just don't just, worry. Yeah, just stress chill. It out. <laughs> the amount of spots I had on my face. And it's just like, <laughs> honestly, that like, that really does not matter like at all like that's not who you are like yeah people might stare at him but <laughs> like you said like, though it's hard to it's kind of the whole process of learning yeah. to deal with it like if I I'd tell myself not to worry about what people think as much and all that kind yeah. of stuff but you can say that to someone but it doesn't mean that they just gonna be like okay cool I won't yeah, and then, yeah that's what I mean yeah. it's hard to say what advice would you give because yeah, I feel yeah. like the advice is just pointless yeah <laughs> but also like we're kind of when we were younger in the industry it was I went like there was some gnarly, some gnarly stuff happened to me which like in this day and age I'll be like what you know like just mm. kick off about yeah, but back then I was just like little 15 year old girl couldn't say anything there's just old older men around me saying mad mm. shit and doing mad shit and like you're just there and you're like this must be how it is yeah and do you think that's a combination <laughs> of you like do you think you speaking up about it's a combination of you just being older as well as like even though things maybe aren't where they could be, but still moved in like the right direction yeah, a little definitely. bit. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Like when I was before, when I was still racing, trying to make it as a racer, two of like the top guys in the UK, would just some two guys told me, um, why don't I just become, they're like, well, if you want to make it in an industry, why don't you just become an Instagram model? Because there's no point in you trying to like, you're obviously not basically you're not a good enough rider to make it as like a rider so mm -hmm. why don't you just post pics of your bike and I was like right let's get it then <laughs> Never <look back. laughs> time to actually try and ride like yeah, yeah so I feel like now. yeah but yeah that's still not okay. if you're watching this no no but I had that growing up like yeah. so much so in our other podcast I obviously told you how I managed to get my hands on you know my first bikes and all that and it <coughs> came across as if we had a lot of money which we didn't and the amount of comments the like pink bike mm. so I recently found my video my first ever edit of when I was like 13 going down plenty loving life obviously first um dirt was it dirt or no media cut or something I can't even remember now oh MTV cut maybe yeah, MTV yeah. Cut, and then so with Mono and that. So I did, yeah. Uh, yeah, I did a video with with them, and I never looked at the comments back then because I was thirteen, didn't really know what Pink Bike was, and I wa really wanted to find it. So I, I found it not too long ago, and I was like, yes, yeah, sick! Like, look <laughs> at me having fun. Looked at the comments, I was like, oh my god! They were like, 
um, can't believe she's had a free bike. She's so shit. She's never going to make it. Oh, yeah, bike park rider. Really think she's going to be able to, like, get to world class. <laughs> like, oh, you should post that now. I did, yeah. I did, I did. I she started replying to all the comments, like, at the blah, blah, like, no, like, no, so, like, like, How's that going for you? <laughs> somebody actually had been on... And in 2017, after I won a few World Cups, yeah. literally put a link to one of my wins and said, how's that going for you? And I was like, nice. yes, like, thank you. Nice. But yeah, like all the comments were like, oh, daddy's got some money or yeah. like, oh, she's she's just a bike park rider. She'll never win one. Of and I, I was a 13 year old girl. Yeah. I think I was 12 actually. Nice. Just. And if you were, if that was you today, you would have had a mobile phone. And you would have almost definitely would have seen, seen, have seen those <laughs> comments. And like, yeah. it I maybe do. would have egged you on, but at yeah. 12 or 13, it could have easily had the I do remember, to be honest, I do remember, I think it might have been Pink Bike, but I did see a bad comment about me once. And I like, like, I can't, at the time, like, I'd never seen anything bad about me because that, yeah, that I didn't have access to stuff like that. And I remember seeing a comment and I broke down in tears and, and dad was like, he looked at the laptop and he was like, and he just, he, he didn't have a go at me, but he was just like, as a computer, whatever it is, he's just like, just, he's like, don't look ever again. Yeah. He's like, don't look. And like, from then on, I've just like, especially big bike articles, Mate, just, I just do not look. This is how I still feel. If I, 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 I spent ages doing a, making a video, like putting everything into it and grafting, then it's almost like anxiety when I know it's going to go on pink bike. I'm just like, I'm almost like, I just want to delete the whole thing. I don't want anyone, because pink Wait, bike is- this going on pink bike? <laughs> probably not probably not no. it's not a, no diss to <laughs> no, no diss to pink bike but no. to some people on there yeah you guys are the horrible users. <laughs> some of the users are just like yeah it takes all the hype away from like yeah. say if you want to race or if i've done a cool video that i like and then it's just like why yeah, that's why you can't it? look yeah no honestly exactly. my dad's so right he's always like why do you look why do you look like no, don't look i think on pink bike the comments are almost like the comments on pink bike have almost become like a bigger thing than the articles it's yeah, like yeah. they almost have like have have career awards. commenter yeah, yeah they have <laughs> that's the thing like some of the comments on pinkback are actually like super funny yeah like in no. terms of like i don't know like someone come up with like i don't even know how they come up with them sometimes but they're like pretty good yeah but like we say in everywhere there's good people yeah. and there's dickheads and most of them just try to out troll each other though they'll be like ha ha blah 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 and, and some of me. them the problem is as well is some people are genuinely just being funny or sarcastic and you can't read the tone yeah. like there's I think that's a big a big fact it's like half well not like some of the time you can read into it wrong I suppose obviously yeah. there's some undeniable ones if it's like pure hate but they like say you can't convey tone other than like the odd yeah. emoji like in a comment but like, I, oh, like, like on that Emily Bessie video I mentioned before some like I read because I was like this is a cool video so I actually read the pink bike comments because I was like wonder what people think to her like letting everyone know how it is and there were like a, quite a few of the vid comments in the video I think were pink bike comments and then below the videos people would comment like that comment was me but I didn't mean it like that and it was like uh, yeah. fuck you go and die <laughs> and it was like what are you on about that's I think, pink, I think pink bike I've got I've got pretty good at like if it is like genuinely hateful okay like um and like Corey Wong no they are good at that because yeah. I had a I didn't ask me anything with them a few years back and <clears> someone was there filtering the comments before they got no to me. Uh, yeah, yeah, in case. I wish they filtered my comments. <laughs> but this was an Ask Me Anything, and with yeah, like an 18 year old girl on yeah, Pink Bike, yeah. they were obviously like, mm, we yeah, should probably filter the, the comments. That's so true. I felt like they took care of me, yeah. basically. Yeah, and yeah. Like, like we're saying, it's nothing against Pink Bike, it's just yeah. some of the users, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the access. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think there was like, a, you know, Corey Walsh, yeah. who came out as um, gay like yeah. last week, mm. whatever, and he, it was shared on Pink Bike, and I think Pink Bike had like actively taken down. What, like, so people were hateful. writing horrible mm. comments about I that? I think there was like one or two, maybe, yeah. But, I don't know, or someone thought it was like a joke or whatever. I think he was like complaining that it got taken down, but yeah. So, big up to him for coming out. It's pretty cool. In it, respect. Yeah, I think that's, that's really such cool. a big step forward. Yeah, it's really cool to, cool to see, like, and hopefully that will pave the way for mm. more people in the bike industry, which is pretty insane when you think about like how many pro riders there is in and then like there's almost like none out as yeah gay. Mm. there must be like what well, you can only expect there to be more people definitely yeah if you've got such a big platform that's respect like, yeah. it's really crazy to think like how gnarly he is on a bike and some of the scary shit that he's done I just, on yeah. a bike but he's and he's 
not scared to do that but then it's taken this long to yeah, yeah. it's like kind of that's that, like yeah. one thing that shined out to me is like yeah, yeah, shit yeah. like because yeah. you see maybe like as a straight person you're like just just come yeah, out or whatever yeah. and it's like the fact that someone like him who's does such nut shit on a bike yeah has done that stuff has before coming hard, coming out you know he, mean, he, testament to it. and didn't he say he didn't really need to but then he felt like he did to help yeah. the next generation and obviously at some point you've got to give back i guess and, yeah. and i think that's so it would be so cool for people growing up thinking as well that bmx isn't mm. you know very yeah because bmx is even like more like gnarlier than mountain yeah. bike even probably but there's no in terms that's the like... thing is stereotypes are just bullshit that's yeah. why i've tried so hard recently to you know in the past couple of years wear what i like have pink kits like because stereotypes are just ugh, they just annoy me mm. so much nice so yeah big up that's cool well we've had you for an hour and 20 minutes plus the oh my god <laughs> plus, the, extra half plus hour. the 20 minutes we did at the start when we weren't recording or we thought we recorded when you filter all the shit out it's gonna be like two minutes long <laughs> <laughs> nah it's none of it's getting edited this time we'll just put it out as an old story but yeah thanks for again for coming back in really appreciate it never again it's been good hanging out with you guys a little bit <laughs> uh we're obviously moving up north as of tomorrow oh, so yeah. sad times it is sad times so. Just all the sick trails we've built around here. <laughs> it's mostly Danny, to be fair. Gonna go right up now. Danny actually, Danny rebuilt what the top that we built the other day because he said so many people were in it. It was. Fun. Oh yeah, it's, have you ridden it again? Actually, it's pretty. No, good. I haven't ridden yeah. it since it's been it's redone. Hey, it's a shame we can get a ride with you guys again before we leave, but I'm sure we'll be back down. We'll yeah. have to come again. for a road trip up there. Yeah, you should do a road north. trip. That'd Take be everyone. sick. Mm. That's what Chaos was saying too. Mm, nice. There we go. Nice one. Thanks Cheers. again.